Good morning, Year 5. Welcome back to your Tuesday English lesson. So today we're going to be moving on using junk to do a writing activity. And before we get into it, you need to pause the video and write the date in the yellow in your English books. So the date is Tuesday, the 2nd of March 2021. And the LO is to plan a poem. So pause the video and do that nice and neatly for me in your maths book, in your English book, sorry, now. Okay, well done everyone. So let's have a look at the signs of success. So use the poem junk to plan my own poem. Create a detailed planning sheet to help me write my own poem on Wednesday. And have a clear idea of what my poem will be about. So as I said, your task for this week is to write a poem about the story of Jasper O'Leary from our short film, Junk. So what you're going to do is you're going to plan it today, write it tomorrow on Wednesday. And then because you have World Book Day Thursday, we're going to not have an English lesson and we're going to share it on Friday on Zoom like last week. OK, so that is your task this week. So this is the poem junk. So this is what you hear over the top of the video when we watch it. So the person who sounds like the narrator is actually reading this over the top of the video. And some of you might have noticed and some of you might not. So because we're going to be writing a poem, I want us to pick apart how we do that successfully. So I want you to look at this example and think about what you can tell me about the structure the language and the punctuation. So take a minute to look at the poem and think about how you will form yours when you're writing your own. Okay, so I've annotated that poem to tell us what we need to include in our own. So we've got the title underlined. So at the top of your own poem, you'll need a title and it neatly underlined. Then we've got verses. So these are split into different paragraphs and each verse usually has around four sentences. Okay, and there's usually a new verse for each idea. As you can see at the start of most of the sentences, they start with a capital letter. And that is because they're the beginning of a new sentence. When you don't use a capital letter is when you're carrying on from the sentence above. So for example, it says, if with a capital I, Jasper O'Leary excelled at one thing. When it came to junk food, he was clearly the king. So as this is one sentence, when does not have a capital W. But then again, we start a new line with new capital letters. So basically at the start of every new sentence, you use a capital letter. And if it carries on to the line underneath, you don't need one there. And then punctuation is interesting in a poem as well, because at the end of each sentence, you obviously need a full stop. But obviously not every line does, like we said, if it's not the end of a sentence. So we've got sun, let us pray for your health, full stop. And then we've got a whole sentence here. So he tried salad once, but it just burned his mouth. So our punctuation comes at the end of the full sentence. And here we've got an exclamation mark. OK, so I think that is everything. And that is how we lay out our own poems. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video again, just to remind ourselves of the story. And whilst you listen, you will hear this poem throughout the video. Listen to the words and think about what you could include in your own poem. You could make up some new ideas. It could be about something else. And we want them to be unique. So feel free to use your vocabulary from your recipes to help you. So I'm going to get our video back up. And as I said, I want you to think about the poem that said over the top and things you could include in your own poem. Hopefully that stops. It. If Jasper O'Leary excelled at one thing, when it came to junk food, he was clearly the king. In his teens, he 
found less healthy things for his plate. He'd eat butter with lard and drink vinegar straight. Jasper got really bizarre, like eating car tires dipped in piping hot tar. for junk food just couldn't be tarnished. Like the Jack Hammer soup with a barbed wire garnish. His doctor said, Son, let us pray for your health. So he tried salad once.
So to get us ready to write our poem, I've created this sort of planning sheet that you could recreate at home. You can choose your own way of how you do this, but this is just an example of something that might help you. So you write the title of the poem here, decide what each verse is going to be about, and you can change the number of verses. You can have more than four. You can write some notes about what you might include, and you can write some words to help you, some rhyming words, some vocabulary, some similes and some metaphors. And then you've just got the finishing sentence, which just concludes the whole poem. So pause the video now and create your own sort of plan. You could do this on your laptop or you could do this on a piece of paper. And once you've done that, we can move on to actually planning our poems. So we're going to start thinking about verse one and here on the right I've took a screenshot of the verse one of junk and it says if Jasper O'Leary excelled at one thing when it came to junk food he was clearly the king in his teens he found less healthy things for his plate he'd eat butter with lard and drink vinegar straight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to give me an idea of what I should include in my own poem so I know that they've introduced the character, Jasper O'Leary, and his unhealthy obsession. So I'm going to choose my own character's name. I'm going to go with Connor O'Jagger. And I'm going to talk about his unhealthy obsession, which is going to be different to Jasper O'Leary's to make my poem unique. So I said Connor O'Jagger, and I'm going to say had an unhealthy obsession. And notice I've put a full stop at the end of this sentence because that's all I want to say so far. I'm going to have a new line. And I'm going to say eating everything rotten in his, and I think I need to think of a word that rhymes with obsession. So I'm going to use possession. So, so far I've got Connor O'Jagger had an unhealthy obsession, eating everything rotten in his possession. So Connor's unhealthy habit is eating rotten food, whereas Jasper O'Leary's was eating junk. So I've got the same idea of revolting things and I've got the same idea of them having an obsession with it. So I'm going to do another new line. I'm going to say, if it was mouldy, and black, it was on his plate. If it was mouldy and black, it was on his plate. And I need to think of something that rhymes with plate. So I could say something out of date. So I could say mouth watering and tongue tingling at anything out of date. So I've got my first verse and I've used Jasper O'Leary's story to inspire my own. So my finished first one is Connor O'Jagger had an unhealthy obsession, eating everything rotten in his possession. If it was mouldy and black, it was on his plate, mouth watering and tongue tingling at anything out of date. So I don't want you to write your poem today, but this is just an idea of what the sort of things you can include and how you get something out of an existing poem. So underneath, I have filled out my planning sheet. And because we've talked about the character and their habit, I've put that in my notes. So I've said, introduce the character, you can change the name, introduce their unhealthy habit, give an example of what this involves. So Jack O'Leary drinks vinegar straight, my person eats things out of date. And I've just put sort of a subheading, which I won't include in my poem, but it will just help me with my plan. So I've said character and habit. And then I've noted down any rhyming words that will help me like obsession and possession, plate and date or straight, thing and king, excelled, mouldy, mouth watering, tongue tingling. So you don't have to write it, but think of what you will include and make notes based on that. So everyone pause the video now and think about what you might include in your first verse and write some notes to help you write it tomorrow.
Okay, so now moving on to verse two. So let's have a look at the one from Junk. So it says, and this is when Jasper got really bizarre, like eating car tyres dipped in piping hot tar. His reputation for junk food just couldn't be tarnished, like jackhammer soup with a barbed wire garnish. So I'm going to add some context to my character, Connor O'Jagger. So I'm going to start by saying, when Connor was a baby, short letter for Connor, and I'm not finished my sentence, but I'm going to start a new line without a capital letter. His parents discovered his bizarre habit. We'll stop because that's my complete sentence. New line. Um, I'm going to say the very second. He reached to the bin. Because he's trying to get mouldy food. Um, I'm going to say new line to finish my sentence without a capital letter. They shot like a rocket to grab it. Exclamation mark. So, so far we have when Connor was a baby, his parents discovered his bizarre habit. The very second he reached to the bin, they shot like a rocket to grab it. So we're rhyming so far. You don't have to rhyme in yours, but I think it sometimes sounds better. Um, I'm going to talk about what other people thought. So I'm going to say, the rumours began to dance around the town. We have our metaphor. And then new line, folks, which is like people whispering and pointing in horror at the local clown. So we're rhyming again with town. So my verse two is when Connor was a baby, his parents discovered his bizarre habit. This very second he reached to the bin, they shot like a rocket to grab it. The rumors began to dance around the town, folks whispering and pointing in horror at the local clown. So again, I've used junk to help me plan my verse two. And I want you to do the same. So think about your character and their habit. You could maybe add some context in verse two, talk about someone who knew your character and how they discovered the habit. Talk about what others thought. So here is my notes. And then I've got my rhyming words vocabulary that will help me. So I've got bizarre and tar, tarnished and garnished, habit and grab it, town and the local clown. I don't know where clown is. Piping hot tar, jackhammer soup, barbed wire garnish and rumours danced. I'm just going to add clown to that. Okay, so as you can see, my plan will help me write this tomorrow. So I want you to think of your character and their habit and think about what you could include in verse two and make some notes to help you write it tomorrow. So pause the video to do that now. OK, so we're now going to think about verse three. So we've got from junk. It says his doctor said, son, let us pray for your health. So he tried salad once, but it just burned his mouth. So he stuck with the junk and made a new goal to swallow an all tankers cargo hold whole. So it's kind of talking about the extent to his obsession. So we need to do the same for our character, but you don't have to, but that's the way I'm going to go. So I'm going to talk about his parents and the doctor's concern. I'm going to say Mr. and Mrs. Jagger. Is it O Jagger? I think it's O Jagger. Took their concern to the doctor's surgery, full stop, abandoning that him there in disgust. And I'm not going to put a full stop because I'm not finished yet. So abandoning him there in disgust, 
as if he had committed perjury. So I'm rhyme, rhyming with surgery again, and I'm going to put a full stop. And committed perjury is like sort of saying someone's done something when they haven't. It's against the law. So, so far we have Mr. and Mrs. O'Jagger took their concern to the doctor's surgery, abandoning him there in disgust as if he had committed perjury. Um, now I'm going to talk a bit like they do in junk about him changing his ways. So I'm going to put, so Connor, oh, Connor tried to change his ways. Making, comma, making himself a salad drizzled in mayonnaise. Okay, so Connor tried to change his ways, making him a, himself a salad drizzled in mayonnaise. I'm going to say the attempt was disastrous. Scolding his insides. So he stuck with the rot and the mold, knowing he had right. So I'm rhyming with insides. So it's a bit of a longer one. So I've broke my sentences down into different sentences. Um, Mr. and Mrs. O'Jagger took their concern to the doctor's surgery, abandoning him there in disgust as if he had committed perjury. So Connor tried to change his ways, making himself a salad drizzled in mayonnaise. The attempt was disastrous, scolding his insides. So he stuck with the rot and the mould, knowing he had tried. So. You could go down a different route for the first three, talk about something else, but I have decided to talk about his family and how they've disowned him for his unhealthy habit. And I've talked about my character trying to change his ways and failing. So again, I've noted my rhyming words and my vocabulary. I've got surgery and perjury, ways and mayonnaise. I've got insides and tried, goal and hole from the junk one, disastrous, which is spelled wrong. Scolding and disgust. I'm gonna, just going to change the spelling correctly. There we go. Okay, so as I said, I want you to sort of talk about maybe your character's family and how they disowned them and your character changing their ways and failing. So pause the video and plan your verse three using your planning sheet and then we'll move on to the last few parts. Okay, moving on to verse four. So if we have a look at the junk one, it says, the day that he died saw a closed cemetery. This is no place for old Jasper O'Leary. So they took him elsewhere on that night, cold and grim, to the outskirts of town, to a place just for him. So I'm going to sort of use that to write mine. I'm going to talk about how his life came to an end because of his obsession and what happened to him. So I'm going to say, at the age of 22, Connor's stomach began to erode, which means like fade away. His journey sadly came to the end, Ooh. came to the end of the road. This place, this town, was no, I don't know what my laptop's doing. This, this town was no place for Connor O'Jagger. Um, so they threw his decayed, which means like rotten, body into the local tip where 
going to carry on my sentence where Connor could at last peacefully get some kip. So that's sleep. So my example is at the age of 22, Connor's stomach began to erode. His journey sadly came to the end of the road. This town was no place for Connor Ojaga. So they threw his decayed body into the local tip where Connor could at last peacefully get some kip. Okay, so again, I've talked about my character's obsession, how it became too much and they sadly died. And you could talk about where they're buried, maybe the junkyard, somewhere like that. You need to add your rhyming words. I've got erode and road, tip and kip, grim and him. I've got cemetery, outskirts of town, cold and grim. Okay, so there's different ideas here. Think about your character, what you could include in this verse, and then have a go at planning on your planning sheet. Okay, and now we're going to think of our finishing line. So in junk, they said, yes, they took him elsewhere. Then they read his last rites. It's the junk shop, it's the junkyard where Jasper now spends his nights. So I'm going to sort of use that to plan my own. I'm going to say in what, what Connor would describe as heaven is where he now spends his nights as a result of his unhealthy obsession. So I've used that one from junk to inspire mine and I've said in what Connor would now describe would describe as heaven is where he now spends his nights as a result of his healthy obsession. So again, you could talk about how your character now spends their nights and remind the readers of their obsession in the finishing sentence to emphasize how bad it was. I've stole the vocabulary heaven, obsession, junkyard, and read his last rites. That sort of means his last words. So I'd like you to now think about your finishing line and how you could sort of wrap up the whole story, reminding the reader of their obsession. So pause the video and complete your finishing line planning. Okay, so just as a reminder, this is what we have produced from using Jasper O'Leary's poem of junk to create our own and think about what our character could be obsessed with and what we could talk about. So I'm just going to read it out as a reminder and then we will finish the lesson. So it's called Rotten and it says, Connor O'Jagger had an unhealthy obsession, eating everything rotten in his possession. If it was mouldy and black, it was on his plate, mouth watering and tongue tingling at anything out of date. When Connor was a baby, his parents discovered his bizarre habit. The very second he reached to the bin, they shot like a rocket to grab it. The rumours began to dance around the town, folks whispering and pointing in horror at the local clown. Mr and Mrs O'Jagger took their concern to the doctor's surgery, abandoning him there in disgust as if he had committed perjury. So Connor tried to change his ways, making himself a salad, drizzled in mayonnaise. The attempt was disastrous, scolding his insides, so he stuck with the rot and the mould, knowing he had tried. At the age of 22, Connor's stomach began to erode. His journey sadly came to the end of the road. This town was no place for Connor O'Jagger, so they threw his decayed body into the local tip, where Connor could at last peacefully get some kip. In what Connor would describe as heaven is where he now spends his nights as a result of his odd obsession. Okay, so that is what we kind of got from junk and creating our own. And I'd like you to have a go tomorrow using your detailed plans. So make sure you're all ready for tomorrow as it's our last lesson on the poem. So you need to have a detailed planning sheet and know what you're going to include in your poem. Please do post your plans on Class Dojo so I can see how you're getting on and I'm sure they will all be great and I'm really excited to hear what you come up with. So thanks for all your hard work 
for uh, today year five you've all done really well and you haven't got long left to go with home learning now so i'll see you all tomorrow and friday where we can share our finished poems and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day